Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Jim. Uh, thank you very much for a nice introduction. Uh, uh, also, uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to uh, visit uh, the campus here and uh, to give a, a colloquium talk. Uh, I visited here about uh, seven years ago. It was in the older physics building. So now it looks uh, totally different. Uh, everyone has a very nice uh, setup in the new labs. And uh, I, I see the growing of the UC Riverside physics. It's very exciting. So uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, so-called electronic high superhighway in topological insulators. So what is superhighway? Uh, we know the uh, uh, highway best is go one way this way and uh, the other way go, you know, this uh, uh, two, uh, one way street go this way and uh, the other uh, go the back way. So if you, uh, if you arrange an electron can go such a way, then of course uh, in one dimensional that uh, you don't have backscattering, therefore you don't suppose to have uh, energy dissipation if uh, everything works out ideally. And also you can uh, send the information uh, uh, without the inter uh, in, uh, interference from the other effect. Okay, so that's the idea, to generate some kind of a material system to have a, a kind of a super highway for electronics. So it turns out, uh, ironically, those kinds of systems can be realized in an uh, insulator. Okay, so that's uh, something uh, amazing. So what I'm going to talk about is, uh, first is uh, on the edge of the sample that you made, uh, although the bulk of the material is insulating, but at the edge or the prim uh, perimeter of the sample actually can conduct the electricity. And this uh, conducting of electricity is based, uh, fundamentally is a dissipationless if you can make things uh, uh, under certain. Uh, so uh, in measurement, you really measure the quantization of the conductance in certain uh, photometer measurement at a certain low temperature. And also in the bulk of this system, actually it turns out to be more and more attractive to a lot of people in condensed matter because this system is made of electron layer and uh, whole layer grow together. And uh, this electron and the whole layer can form, can support excitons. But these excitons are different than the usual exciton, which is generated by optical, uh, optical pumping. And in this case, because in the same Fermi energy, you have electron and a hose, and uh, the tendency for electron hole is to form a pair, and this pair can support superfluidity in the bulk of the system. So what I'm going to talk about is one type of insulator uh, protected by some topological uh, index or topological uh, protection. And in the bulk of the system, could it be superconductivity or superfluidity? And uh, on the edge of the system, you can support electron uh, uh, transport in one dimensional in a way similar to a uh, superhighway. So I think I have to go to here. Okay. So my outline will be uh, some introduction for topological Protected, uh, protected uh, topological matter. Then I'm going to talk about material, which is, uh, I named this uh, bilayer semi-metal, because it has both electron and holes. Uh, number three, I'm going to talk about how the one-dimensional superhighway happens at the perimeter of the insulator. Then number four, I'm going to very briefly talk about how electron hole pairing can induce superconductivity inside this uh, insulator, uh, then I summarize. So the, this year's Nobel Prize in Physics uh, is uh, uh, given by uh, David Sellers, Duncan Howden, and Michael Kosteris for the theoretical discovery of topological phase transitions and a topological phase of matter. Uh, so the work basically was done some 30 years ago, or even traced back. Why? this became so 
uh, important that uh, is given a Nobel Prize. Uh, because uh, one of the reasons is more recently, the topological insulator based on those initial uh, uh, thinking uh, that really uh, bear fruit now. And there are a lot of real material really shows uh, very interesting uh, properties. So uh, when I watched the uh, announcement of the Nobel Prize, because everyone expects this year will be gravitational uh, wave detection. And I was very excited about gravitational detection. But turns out uh, this is given by the uh, condensed matter. Then uh, Professor Hansen later explained explain why this uh, was a Nobel Prize. So he come up with a bag of lunch bag and put on the table, then open the lunch bag. Say, I have several things I want to show you. This is a burn, this is a, a donut, uh, this is a, a, a pretzel. Okay. Each one looks the same, but there's no hole in it. There's one hole in it, there's a two hole in it. What's that mean? This is topology in terms of mathematics, because there's an index which characterize these three things. One has index zero, one index one, one index uh, two. Uh, in terms of topological environment. So how do you think what relate to our experiment? So we go back to what is the first uh, uh, experiment showing topological matter. Uh, this uh, in the integer quantum Hall fat, which first reported by Van Kleechen and the collaborators in 1980s. So the observation is that if you apply magnet field to a two-dimensional electron system, then you observe something very peculiar. Classically, if you measure the hall resistance, you measure a linear dependence of the uh, resistance in terms of hall geometry uh, versus magnet field you apply to it. But uh, uh, instead, uh, he observed that instead of this linear behavior, he observed a lot of these precisely quantized plateaus which can be related to a universal constant h divided by e squared. Uh, if we know this uh, dimensionality, then we know this ohm. So this amounts to 25, 25 kilo ohm, 112 point something ohm. Okay. So this can be measured by nowadays standard, can be measured to the 10th digit. And uh, you can compare this measurement from different group around the world with different material, different uh, 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 geometry of the sample, you get uh, uh, agreement within 10 to the minus eight. Okay, so that uh, shows that experimentally these are very precisely quantized in a very dirty material or in a non-ideal condensed matter material. So what's the reason this can be quantized to such an accuracy? Uh, to the extent that one can use these to determine the uh, fine structure constant using unreliable quant uh, uh, solid state measurement instead of high energy or atomic measurement. The reason is the, the process quantize of this is protected by uh, some topological uh, environment, invariant in this system. So without going into the detail, we just uh, uh, copy what the Nobel Prize announcement says that all these number actually can be associated with the index of the topological uh, uh, matter. So for instance, all these steps actually can be characterized zero holes, one hole, two holes, three holes. And uh, of course, this can be characterized with index two, index three, index four, et cetera. If the one is all the way here, okay. So uh, without going to uh, very elaborate, but uh, just from uh, this uh, hand waving comparison, we know there's something very peculiar in those kind of two-dimensional system. Uh, later, of course, people figure out this actually relate to the topology and uh, 
the physics is locked into topology. Therefore, due to the rigidness uh, of the topology uh, index, the physics of those kind of measurement actually is uh, locked into very, very high uh, precision. Okay. So not only that, uh, in the integer case, we can also see uh, this uh, topological uh, matter in a much more uh, clean system, which is uh, the system of ultra-high mobility two-dimensional gas in the very high magnet field to up to 18 tests. You can see all these oscillations and uh, a lot of zeros. And uh, th these are all related to the topological matter with uh, protection from the uh, topology. And uh, in the case of the uh, interaction uh, dominated system, such as a fraction of quantum half at the topology uh, showing here is uh, there should be some new quantum number. And this new quantum number is generated by, uh, not by single electron, rather by the interaction among the electrons. So the topological matter can be either generated by certain protection from the symmetry or generated by internal interaction of the system itself. And in the later case, we call this is a topological matter which is, uh, has long range entanglement, okay? So there are recent paper from Professor uh, uh, Wen Xiaogang, uh, which put a here is a zoo of quantum topological phase of matter, okay? There are many, many of these. You, you have a long list of possibility, and also uh, you can look into uh, some very exotic uh, uh, type of a matter which has, uh, for instance, strings, which has uh, spins, which can be fermion, can be boson. Also, the result of this is to generate some kind of quasi particle uh, which are not boson nor uh, fermion. They are anions, something in between. And uh, some of the anions even can ob obey so called a non availing exchange properties. Uh, these are related to some kind of exchange, not described by phase change, rather by a matrix. Therefore, you cannot uh, do the way like A cross B equal to B, uh, B cross A in the case of a matrix. And this can be used for quantum computing. Uh, so this uh, uh, some kind of a hand waving uh, introduction showing that not only this uh, topological uh, matter predicted or even uh, thought about 30 years ago are real. They are abundant, actually, in our real uh, life. And uh, they eventually will affect our real life. Uh, that's the hope for next maybe 30 years. Those topological matter actually can change our life in some way, like such as uh, quantum computing or other things. So now I'm going to uh, switch back to what I'm going to talk about. So uh, the thing I'm going to talk about is some kind of uh, invariant of the quantum Hall effect. If we know the quantum Hall effect, you need a, a high magnet field, you need a two-dimensional gas, and you also need a low temperature. So if you have a two quantum Hall system, uh, one, uh, uh, go this way, the other one you put uh, in the opposite way. Then the magnet field you apply for the first one will be up and uh, for the second one will be down. And uh, so in overall, the magnet field can be canceled out. But you, don't, you have a two copy of integer quantum Hall effect. One has the chirality of the uh, edge state going this way. The other one has the chirality opposite because you're opposite uh, sense of this. So you imagine that if you can do this in real experiment, you will end up some system which has a two edge state. One goes to left, one goes to right, and uh, without magnet field. So that's uh, some kind of imagination, uh, not uh, really uh, promoted by experiment, really. is some thinking from theorists. 
it turns out can be realized. Okay. Now, how do you realize this? The magnetic field that we need in this system uh, can be replaced by something, not a physical magnetic field, rather the effective magnetic field generated by spin orbital interaction, which are very general phenomenon for atomic physics. So in the condensed matter, spin orbital interaction can be uh, in an organized way, uh, so-called a rush bar effect or dress house effect. Now, as long as you have a, uh, some one of these effects, especially rush bar effect, you can have very high spin orbital interaction, or uh, conversely, you can have very high effective magnetic field, even you don't apply magnetic field. Okay, so that's one of the idea put into those topological thing. Then the uh, protection from the topological insulator in this case is coming from topology, but this uh, not from the interaction, rather by some outside symmetry. Okay, so what is the symmetry? The symmetry here is required that you have time reversal symmetry. The time reversal symmetry means. If I go to left with the positive time, I can go back to the right with negative time. Okay, so that's time reversal symmetry is a fundamental symmetry in the universe. So if we can have this kind of system, then we can build a system which I said is a copy of two quantum hole effect back to back, and then you can have edge state like this. So. Uh, so this is a, some kind of a idea for the real space. You have one edge state going one priority, the other opposite go to the opposite uh, priority. And uh, one of the edge state will carry one of the invariant, in this case, is a spin down. And the other one will carry spin up, okay? So in that sense, we call spin momentum locking. Uh, uh, spin and the direction of the motion uh, in real space will be locked together. So if you go to left, you must have positive spin, and if you go to right, you have uh, negative spin. Okay. So this is uh, guaranteed by first by uh, time reversal symmetry. If, if, if the time reversal symmetry is broken, then you don't have this locking. And then secondly, you need a very strong orbital, spin orbital interaction. So the first realization of this uh, is uh, realized by this material called the mercury terrorite, cadmium terrorite. This is a material very commonly studied or used for infrared detector. So the material itself is kind of mature. But uh, you have to design the system that you, have, you can have two bands. Uh, then you can have some kind of inversion of the band, which means the whole state will have a high energy than the uh, electron state. This is opposite to what you usually have in metal or semiconductor. Uh, you always have an electron in the conduction band higher than the valence band whole. But if you have some way to reverse this, you can have those uh, uh, topology uh, symmetry protected uh, edge state, and then this will be rigid uh, because the time reversal symmetry will protect this. Okay, so the uh, the measurement really shows that the uh, conductance around the edge is uh, is can be measured, even uh, the bulk or two dimensional sample itself is insulator, but uh, there's a current going around. The, the perimeter, and also there are two type of current. One is go this way, and the other one go this way. Depends on how do you measure. Okay, so this is uh, proven by uh, the first experiment, 2008. Okay, by uh, a group in Germany. So the second experiment actually is coming out from uh, another system called the Indian arsenide gallium antimony system. So this system has the following feature. This system is artificial. Really means you have to make this system by epitaxial growth. You grow 
uh, one layer of indium arsenide, which is an electron, and uh, you grow another layer next, uh, immediately after this, called the gallium antimony, which has a host. Uh, in the normal uh, situation, the uh, electron state, even they quantized, uh, usually is uh, lower than the uh, quantized uh, host state. So in this case, you can see the electron has lower energy than the whole energy. Therefore, you have a natural setting for inverted band. And because there is no barrier in between, or, or only very small barrier, therefore these two bands is going to mix. Uh, once you mix, uh, find this uh, real space uh, uh, diagram, we can look at in the case space. In the case space, this will be electron band without uh, uh, mixing, and this will be whole band without mixing, approximately. But uh, due to the mismatch of the symmetry of electron in a whole in terms of wave function. And the uh, electron usually have S wave and uh, the whole typically have a P wave. So if they, uh, if they meet together, they don't, uh, uh, they don't like each other. So therefore, they will avoid each other so, uh, to open a small gap here. And this gap actually make the system is an insulator because if you put a Fermi energy here, then you end up in the gap. Therefore, the bulk cannot support any current, okay? Even you apply electrical field. But uh, on the other hand, due to the time reversal symmetry protected topological C2 property, you have a pair of edge state. One goes to left, one goes to right, and then ideally, one will carry positive spin uh, projection, the other one go to negative spin projection. So that's the quantum spin hole effect. So now our experiment actually shows uh, this actually uh, uh, really happens in this way, okay? So uh, by the way, this material called a 6.0 Armstrong family because all these lattice constant of those compound semiconductors are approximately 6.1 Armstrong. And also, this uh, very uh, useful material for infrared detector because you can change the gap energy by uh, artificially changing those growth or uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, growth condition and other things. Okay, so uh, I will skip this part uh, uh, in terms of the history. Okay, so this was studied during the 90s in terms of uh, uh, look for excitons, because you have electrons here, you have a host here, though naturally people think electron and a hole will attract each other to form a pair. And this pair serves like a Cooper pair in the superconductor, therefore you may have some kind of new superconductor. Okay, so that's the idea uh, uh, which drives people, uh, uh, driven, uh, uh, drove people's uh, research and also, more recently, this was related to the topological insulator. Okay, so uh, here is a device. So you make device as uh, these two layers grow by uh, molecular being epitaxy. I know Professor Jin and also other groups here are very uh, 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 mature, uh, are also uh, uh, very experienced in those kind of technique. So, but the material here is a semiconductor in the arsenide antimony, okay. Then you grow this material and on the substrate you can put them together, then you put a potential gate on top of this and then you can put a back gate on the back of this. So basically it looks like uh, there are two MOS factor. One is a P-type, one is N-type, put a back to back. And then you allow electron hole to uh, tunnel each other, therefore you have gap and then you have insulator then you have an edge state. Okay, so that's the phase diagram that you can change the, uh, 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 change the condition of electron density and the whole density. So the requirement is the number of the electron should be equal to the number of holes. Therefore, you can have uh, maximum uh, energy gap opens. Therefore, you have a good insulator. 
So here they're showing some transport measurement and uh, these are family transport measurement uh, showing the, the, the has oscillation from the uh, landau levels. Then you can have a uh, whole resistance showing this uh, uh, N type. And in one device, you can change this all the way to P type with a negative whole resistance. Okay. So these are uh, uh, really good material, but uh, uh, one can get uh, some very interesting results. So uh, now, uh, uh, next, I am going to flash through what we have uh, so far. So we have a generation one. Generation one, you have this uh, general, uh, very simple uh, design. You can have 50K, uh, which is uh, like a 4 milli EV uh, energy gap. So you need to measure this at like a, a really low temperature, maybe less than one Kelvin. But you do see an energy gap. But on the other hand, the bulk is not completely insulating. Therefore, the bulk is leaking. So in that case, you cannot really measure the edge state uh, clearly. You have to uh, deal with how do you uh, separate these two effects. So the second generation is we want to localize the, uh, the, uh, the carriers in the bulk, which make uh, things leaking. And uh, then by doping silicon, into the interface, we are able to uh, get uh, uh, this uh, sample really, really uh, insulating. Therefore, you can observe, quantize the plateau from the edge state. Then number three is, uh, see this is the uh, gap which is relatively small. So if I have some trick to uh, enhance the gap, I will gain a lot because you can change some other parameter especially you can measure this in the relatively high temperature. So what we do is to introduce some strain during the growth. And the strain effect here is introduced by indium, and the indium atom is larger than gallium antimony on average. Therefore, indium make a lattice bigger. Okay. And uh, in order to accommodate this epitaxial growth, the, uh, the underlayer actually compress the, the epitaxial layer to push them to compress. And this compression make the valence band changes a lot. Okay. The effect is very obvious. Then for this uh, uh, fundamental reason, then the energy gap became really large. So we can enhance this energy gap by uh, order of five. So that's uh, almost pushed towards the uh, uh, 250K or something. So uh, now I'm going to uh, show something more technical. It's just uh, first we do measurement uh, prove that indeed uh, the bulk is insulating. So uh, the bulk is insulating in the condensed matter physics or measurement is not really just to measure resistivity, rather is to measure how this resistivity changes with temperature. And that's the indication of true, sup uh, true insulator. So we do see that the resist uh, the one over G, which is the uh, conductivity, uh, inverse conductivity, and now is the resistivity, is goes, uh, goes up uh, uh, with a lower temperature. So when the temperature goes down, you go to, the, so the resistance really goes higher and higher, become more insulating. And from the slope of this, you will know what's the energy scale involved in this, uh, in this uh, transport. So we get energy which is a measured uh, 66 Kelvin is compared to calculate like a 50 Kelvin. So that's a pretty reasonable. Then at the low temperature part, you can get a smaller energy gap like a 26 Kelvin. So that's proved this is a really the insulating. And then also you can measure uh, with uh, uh, some kind of four terminal minor, two terminal minor measure the quantized uh, conductance. Uh, so uh, people may ask, if you have a dissipationless uh, transport, then I suppose you should measure resistance is zero. Otherwise, uh, how can you say this is a, a, a dissipationless? But in real experiment, you never get a zero. You really get some kind of quantized value. Okay, the reason is, uh, the transport in this one-dimensional channel itself is dissipationless, which means 
you have zero resistance in the Y itself or the channel itself. But when you do measurement, you really have to connect this to the outside. So when you connect to the outside, you have to make a really big contact. And this contact really screws this up for your measurement. But uh, fortunately, although you can never measure zero resistance, you can measure a quantized value according to the theory. So the quantized value really implies in the uh, channel itself, resistance is zero. The resistance happens because you have interface between your one-dimensional channel and the three-dimensional contact. And this is unavoidable physically because you have mismatch between these two, uh, two, uh, two entities. And this mismatch automatically gives you some kind of quantized value of the uh, resistance, okay? So as long as we believe this, we do see uh, dissipationless uh, transport in these uh, channels, okay? So, uh, so that's uh, uh, very nice. But on the other hand, if you measure a very long channel, uh, meaning if you make longer, longer samples, you find the resistance actually not a quantized, rather is a proportional to the length of your sample. So that's like Ohm's law. They're nothing to do with the quantum mechanics. So how do you explain this? So that's one of the question that which inconsistent with the theory rather is a challenge for the experimentalist. Uh, the reason for this is that we believe in this one dimensional channel, uh, the simple picture of without a single particle transport without any interaction is not uh, precisely valid in our real measurement because uh, if you have interaction, of course, this is a simple time reversal symmetry protected theory is not sufficient to explain this. Rather, you really have to rely on some more sophisticated uh, uh, interacting theory like the Lotting liquid to explain this. Okay. So we do have some evidence really showing in the current sample, we do have strong interaction of electrons in those channels, okay. So the, one of the reason is this edge velocity of those uh, edge channels are extremely low. So how do we visualize this? It's simply the velocity is related to the slope of this edge state in the K space. So this is the K, K, and this is the energy or the uh, uh, the energy or kinetic energy of the edge mode. So if you look for this, the slope is really shallow. Slope is shallow means the velocity is very low, okay? So suppose you have a slope which is a flat, then velocity is equal, equal to zero. So uh, in this case, you can visualize that the slope of this edge state is rather low. It's a 210 to the four millisecond uh, 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 sorry, the uh, meter per second. So what that mean is that uh, in usual semiconductor, you have a two ten, 10 to the six. Uh, in metal, you have even uh, higher. Uh, in graphene, is three ten to the six. Okay, so that's uh, about two order of magnitude smaller than usual conductor. And uh, that means the kinetic energy in this system is really small about 100 times smaller than usual metal. But on the other hand, the uh, interaction energy is really given by the uh, repulsion of the electron to electron, which is given by cooling potential. And uh, this cooling energy is uh, E squared divided by the distance and uh, then also divided by the uh, dielectric constant. And so in that case, you can see the uh, interaction energy basically does not change in this case, but the kinetic energy is way too small. So in that case, the system actually is strongly interacting system rather than single particle system. So we can look for this interaction regime and also compare to the first uh, topological insulator into the, these are five, 10 to the five, and here we have a two, 10 to the four. So we are in the very strongly interacting regime which we call a particular name called Lottinger liquid. And this Lottinger liquid itself 
uh, does not obey simple uh, uh, transport law, uh, rather it has a very linear transport properties. And uh, we are not going to uh, go to detail, but it uh, looks like we have some kind of system which is not the uh, original predicted, is a single particle system, rather is a strongly interacting system. Okay, so I skip uh, some of the technical thing. Rather, I'm going to show you, in order to have really time reversal symmetry protect quantum spin Hall effect, we want to have a system which support single particle uh, transport uh, uh, proposal. So how do you get this? Uh, immediately we know the easiest way to imagine if we can enhance the energy gap, then the slope will change like this. Okay, so the velocity will increase by uh, tremendously if you can increase the energy gap. Okay, then the interaction will reduce uh, it, uh, what that follows. Okay, so the idea is if we can have a material which has a large energy gap, maybe we can move out of interaction very quickly. So, uh, so the string layer really this idea. Okay, so we made a string layer. Uh, by doping indium into gallium antimony. Uh, and then, of course, you can measure this in the same way as before. So what we can measure is, first you calculate this, you can find the energy gap now enhanced to like 200 Kelvin, uh, depends on the strain. So uh, then you measure the energy gap. Uh, here you get uh, the older one is a 66, and then the next one you get a 1% strain you get a 1.130 uh, K. Uh, then you get a 1.5% string, you get a 250K. So it looks like a very nice, they demonstrate that you can get uh, enhanced energy gap by simply uh, put a string uh, in the gross plane by uh, gross. Uh, rather, this string is not by the, put by the, by the outside pressure, rather really by gross mismatch and then the com a combination of the mismatch by uh, automatically compress this, okay? So in the material science way, now this is called the chemical potential. This is not a physical potential from outside, rather it's from the chemical composition uh, induced uh, uh, pressure, chemical potential. So the chemical potential actually plays uh, very nicely from here to six uh, to 250, okay? Then we look at the edge state. The edge state actually has a higher velocity now. Therefore, uh, because uh, this slope enhanced, therefore the edge state should uh, behave uh, towards non-interacting more and more like so. So indeed uh, we can find that we can have really long uh, samples. In this case, is compared to the microscopic lens, is 10 micron, we can still get a quantized. Okay, so previously 10 micron, you can get uh, a non-quantized. So lastly, uh, how many minutes I still have? 15 minutes, okay. So uh, I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm very conscious about, uh, you know, don't go over time. So the, I'm going to talk about possibility for subconductor based on electron hole pairing. This, uh, again, this uh, inside this uh, two-dimensional system. Because you have electron and a hole, uh, uh, so hand waving that you think this electron and the hole will attract each other. If they can attract one by one or some way, just like uh, in the Cooper pair, then maybe there's some ground state which is supported by those uh, Cooper pair. So that's the idea, okay. So uh, first, uh, the Cooper pair, uh, or the BCS subconductor was, uh, uh, the theory was uh, uh, put forward by John Bardeen and uh, Leo Cooper and uh, Barbara Schreffer uh, during uh, 1957. So they got a Nobel Prize 72. So the Cooper pair in a, a way is, uh, can be uh, visualized by this. If one electron moves in this direction, then the uh, lattice, which has uh, ions, positive ions, is going to distort by the attraction of this, uh, this electron. So this will form some kind of deform-like uh, 
all the uh, ions are going to go to the center. And then uh, locally, this will be positive cloud, okay, instead of neutral. Therefore, this positive cloud is going to attract the second electron to towards this, uh, this, uh, this positive potential. Therefore, effectively, this electron and this electron are going to uh, correlate, going to form a pair. And this pair, you know, from this picture will be very loose because once they form pair, they leave again, okay? So, but uh, overall, in the system, electron and the other electron has chance to pair, okay? So electron can has chance, can has chance to pair any electron in the system, okay? So this kind of probability we call Cooper pair, okay? Cooper pair is formed by effective interaction between one electron and the second electron, and it can be formed uh, across the whole system, okay? So, now if you look at the same uh, physics, but uh, look for in the case of fermions, which are pursued by uh, Deborah Jane uh, in a quantum gas called the Adams. So, uh, you have two regions, one is you have a BCS region, this electron and the hole are very loosely paired. And this electron, and this, in this case, there's no electron and a hole, rather it's all, all of these are electrons. So this electron has a probability to form another electron to form a pair, and meanwhile, there's also probability to form pairs with other electron, okay? So the total wave function uh, here is a linear combination of all possibilities, okay? Now, if we assume those electron density became very, very dilute. So electron to meet other electron chance is, is became smaller than the probability for electron to pair any other electron. It really depends on particular location and et cetera. So in that case, you can have second intermediate strong interacting pairing, okay? So now if we go to other extreme, that all these electrons only pair one electron with the other electron to form a stable molecule. So, uh, and uh, uh, then another, another molecule is far away from this molecule. Therefore, you can effectively think, are these are bosons? Because these are two electrons, two electrons, two electrons, and they are well separate, and they will have both condensation if the Borea the uh, wavelengths become sufficiently large to uh, reach the other electron uh, uh, molecules. So that's called BEC, okay? So in the same system, you can change it from BEC to B, uh, from BCS to BEC by changing the distance between on average electrons, which means you change the density, you can drive the system from one to the other if all the conditions are met, okay? So the same thing, Sing thinking has uh, uh, proposed a long time ago, 60s, by uh, several theorists uh, in US, also in, in, uh, in Soviet Union for exciton insulator, okay? So exciton insulator, in effect, is a BCS superconductor. So why you can call this both either superconductor or insulator? for the following reason. So if we just look for this case, that you do have weakly tunneling between these two layers, but you have strong coolant interaction, then you have effective forming of electron and the whole pairing, okay? Noting here is a negative, this is positive, therefore coolant interaction is negative, okay? This uh, very effectively make this pairing. Although the pairing can be very loose, this electron can pair with other electron, okay? Or other holes, but uh, on average, you can see there's a pairing. So if you have a very uh, good pairing between electron and holes, then you can see there's an exciton, 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 formed spontaneously because you don't need the optical pumping. Rather, you can just have holes and the electron at the same time, okay? So, now you can see this is a neutral subject, 
if we ignore the high order, like the uh, dipole thing. Then if you apply electrical field, this will not drive any current, because uh, one way for electron is go this way, and the four hole is go the other way, try to appear them apart. But if the electrical fields are not large enough, they remain neutral, therefore there's no current. Okay, so in that sense, we call this insulator. But on the other hand, if we measure this in a different way, rather we send the current onto the top layer, then send the current to the bottom layer in such reverse way, then you can drive this current in this direction uh, with these uh, electrons, and you can also drive the same current with the holes. But then now they go like, like this, okay, go like this. Uh, there should be no, no dissipation. Uh, this is the so-called uh, counterflow superfluidity, okay. So in that sense, actually the BCS type of uh, correlation. Why we call BCS later, I'm going to mention this, but uh, this is uh, a new type of a superconductor, although uh, macroscopically, you have to think of the insulator, but uh, locally, you can make this uh, superconductor. Okay, so this is uh, some kind of uh, interesting, because if we consider spin, you, we may be able to drive spin current in an insulator, okay. So now we go back to the theoretical proposal in, uh, in sickness, basically, for optical pump the uh, exciton, you need to uh, overcome this energy gap by pumping, uh, uh, pumping light. Then you put an electron from, from the whole band, go to, uh, go to the conduction band, and then they form an uh, electronic uh, bound state, which below the, energy, uh, the conduction band, which is here, okay. Now this is a pretty sizable, this is about 10 millivolt to 30 millivolt. Now if you make a semiconductor gap, smaller, smaller, is small is to reach this point, then you can see this pumping is no need because the electron uh, hole, rather to form a bound state to, to give, uh, to save energy without any pumping, okay? So the only requirement is that you really to make this energy small enough uh, to compare to the bonding energy. Therefore, you can have an instability to have uh, excitonic insulator, okay? So in our system, even more favorable because we have semi-metal made of this, therefore, uh, the gap already negative, therefore, more favorable for electronic pairing, or uh, for the electron hole pairing. So this proposed 90s, but I never realized in experiment. I think uh, one of the reason that is that you really have to control the density. Uh, again, you really require very, very good samples uh, to do this. So indeed, uh, we have this kind of sample, and we can show that this electronic uh, whole pairing actually can be realized in real materials. Okay. So uh, now some parameter. What's the diameter of this ball radius of this uh, electron hole? It's about 45 amtron, and uh, the interdistance is like 100 to 300, and the bonding energy 100K. So if you do experiment uh, like a one Kelvin, uh, you, you can have a low enough temperature, and uh, then the uh, density is low enough, therefore basically you can have a kind of a, a electron whole pair is, is an individual entity. And of course they have some interaction. Therefore you can have something between the BEC and the BCS in this system. So uh, because of time limit, next I'm going to show you two evidence for this. One is uh, you have a calculation from the Hartree-Fock self-consistent. Then you have some kind of a measurement, uh, some kind of calculation result for the energy gap this is the energy gap for the superconductor or for the insulator. And then also you have the blue, uh, the blue one. The blue one is the energy required to take this electron hole pair out of the condensate and let them far apart, okay? Now, only this channel can be excited by the 
optical. If you have optics, uh, you shine the infrared, the infrared is going to uh, take this uh, pair out of the condensate and put it apart because you need the input energy to do this. Okay. So optically, we can detect the blue one, but we cannot detect the, the, the condensate itself. So now optically, uh, what I'm going to show actually, indeed we have absorption, absorption. In this is a terahertz absorption versus the wave vector. Okay, so you do have a two peak, uh, two absorption uh, things happen. So one is in this energy and the other one in this energy. Okay, so if you look at this, where this happens, have, should happen at the highest density of states or happens in the flattest, most flat part of the dispersion. So it should happen here and also happen here, okay? So this one actually is this one, and this one actually is this one, okay? So without uh, explaining why this became very broad, you can see these two distinct features which relate to the maximum density of states over here and the maximum density of states here. So that's a very uh, convincing evidence showing there's an exciton, okay? Now, also there's a condensate probably like this. So uh, now if you go to lower uh, apply magnetic field, then this uh, absorption became very sharp instead of very broad, okay? So this uh, positive, uh, uh, this uh, uh, magnetic field applied uh, uh, perpendicular to the plane, actually they make exciton more, com more compact because the Lorentz force really to make them uh, uh, shrink a little bit. And uh, by shrinking this, actually uh, the absorption will be more concentrated on one energy. Okay, so that's a hand waving uh, explanation, but uh, uh, pretty much uh, agreed with the uh, usual explanation. Okay. So the second one is uh, really in this measurement we have uh, two, uh, we have uh, electron hole, but in between electron hole we have uh, a barrier. So there's no tunneling between electron hole, rather you only have coolant interaction. But this coolant interaction is the main reason that we can have exciton. But uh, the tunneling is the main reason that we should have an edge state. But, so we have designed other experiment really just show exciton. Uh, so this shows that exciton, if you turn this to a neutral point, you do see a very high resistance peak, okay, in the neutral point. And uh, also you have a second peak uh, next to it. Then uh, detailed analysis shows this actually, uh, uh, one is uh, related to the exciton. And the other one, the smaller one, we are not able to explain at this point. but. Uh, on this fine structure, it really tells that uh, there's a lot of things that we can do uh, with this system in terms of uh, optics or the transport to understand two things. One is the bulk, uh, which can be very exotic superconductor. And uh, the edge state can be exotic one-dimensional system for study interactions. So uh, for, uh, for this, I thank you for your attention. Also, I acknowledge my student in the Rice University and the Peking University, which I been, uh, uh, collab collaborate for uh, many years, and also my collaborators in Teledyne for growing the samples, uh, who uh, they are in the uh, uh, Southern Oaks uh, in California, and also this uh, for the terahertz measurement. Also, I acknowledge many, many interactions with uh, my uh, colleagues and also theorists uh, around the world. So uh, uh, for this, I thank you for your attention. Oh, for the, uh, for the edge state, uh, we don't have answer yet, but I think uh, uh, this uh, one thing is uh, related to 
maybe two things you can look at. One is these interacting uh, driven system. Therefore, uh, there's, maybe there's an internal uh, uh, the structure of the one-dimensional channel. So uh, in, in, the, in the extreme case, they may already break down into very small pieces. And uh, but the transport is sustained by the transport, by the tunneling between them. So in that case, if you apply magnetic field, unless you destroy the uh, system, uh, the response is very low. Okay. So that's also uh, related to the smallest of the, of the uh, velocity. And the second layer is uh, maybe parameter rise lay, uh, are li likely that the G factor can be very small uh, because in those, uh, those layers, if you grow uh, in, 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 the, in the quantum well system, very common that along this direction, the G factor almost zero. Okay, the G factor is very large here, but very small here. So we don't know the answer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just curious, when you have an electrostatic environment like what we're using in the Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yes. But then you have an external field mm -hmm. that is then either polarizing or, or trying to break the, that dipole yeah, yes. voltage. Yeah. So do you ever see anything related to that? You would expect that in either being in peak, you're in a place where. Yeah, this peak is uh, in the neutral point. So uh, your question is uh, this actually, uh, there's an electrical field along this direction. Yeah. It can be very large. So what's the effect? Yeah, uh, yeah. We we think this is pos possible. Uh, there's a star shift, a star shift, uh, and but that that's, uh, has to be measured by optics, and uh, then uh, we we only start this uh, terahertz measurement, which is a very crude in a way. So uh, optics measurement uh, actually is a much more sophisticated pointing. So in the future, we uh, we think this is uh, one of the thing we will. Really looking into it. I mean, it may, it may actually have something to do with the fact that these peaks are too steep. I mean, oh, these two peaks, yeah. I mean, if those peaks disperse with, so there's some line in the gauge parameter space, there's some line in the 16 to 10 to the tensile mm. in that interrelated area. Yeah. And that may not be just one that is that the combination of the two points. Yes, so yes. Multiplied by that. But you can yeah. see that there are many peaks. Uh, for this one. Yeah, yeah. I think this uh, probably is a good, uh, I think, good suggestion because we've been troubled yeah. trying to figure out whether the two states or not. But if you look for the electrical induced stock shift, maybe uh, some, you know, some uh, something we can look at. Uh, yeah. Thank you. For Uh, the conductance is not quantized, or? No, the co co contact, uh, con not quantized in, in time, but. Uh, it is, it is uh, well, it, if you look at the data, the data is plotted in such a way the logarithmic. So in the logarithmic scale, they almost, uh, you know, you can say this is uh, uh, consistent with the quantization. But if you plot this in the linear scale, they really very deviate from no, quantization. No, what that, that, uh, you have, you have two yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, so uh, conductance currently is Oh. Yeah. Oh. No. Uh, when you do measurement, you only have you ex occupy one state. 
the, because you, you have a positive negative, you only occupy this state. But you choose the channel, not the ideal channel. Yeah. No, uh, but uh, the one, one channel only support like this. So if you measure uh, your voltage probe, your voltage applies to measure this one, and this one is there. This one does not respond. Is it because you have yeah. a finite voltage? No, it, well, that's one way. It's, uh, it's, it's not. It's uh, fundamentally, this one is carry current, and this one cannot carry current uh, five backwards, unless it go backwards, can carry no, no, no. current. Yeah. yeah, but uh, one is a spin up, one is spin down. But, uh, but uh, this one can carry current goes this direction, and this, the second one cannot carry current go this direction. So in this bias, this is insulator. There's nothing, unless you break. Well, yeah, but, uh, but uh, fundamentally, because these two, one is, uh, one is occupied, the one not occupied. Because of the backscattering is not allowed. Now, if you apply very high voltage, it really means you break the system. So that's not a, that's not a serial. Yeah, that's uh, in the measurement. You only excite one channel. The other channel is not there for this uh, for this potential. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I disagree. Uh, this is not a nonlinear effect. It's just a fundamentally, if you don't break the gap, it should be like this. Now, if I apply a very high voltage, you break the gap. Of course, uh, things different. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, we have two extremes. One is that uh, you have a barrier, so there's no tunneling. The other one has no barrier, you have uh, full tunneling, right? And these two, one is for S-way. No, one is for S-way. The other one is uh, more towards P-wave. So if you change the... Uh, you, you must uh, fine tune in these two parameters. One is the uh, tunneling, the other one is the, uh, is the coolant interaction. Then you can have from S switch to P in principle, yeah. Yeah, but uh, we don't know this P. This P is different than the, the superconductor P. This P is uh, for, the, for the angular momentum, total angular momentum, which is P, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a slight difference. So, so you don't have this, uh, uh, you know, interesting Marjana forming out those types of here. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, so, in this uh, structure, you, you need a tunnel. Yeah, yeah. So, in this kind of mechanism, is that rush bar or which one? This uh, is a rush bar. It's a rush bar. Yeah. Rush bar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, much strongly is a rush bar. So, the spin. The consequence of this is that without rush bar spin go like this, but with the rush bar spin it's like almost uh, you know they were tilt, tilted towards the uh, plane. So now if you can measure this, then you are able to tell which one is dominate. So we are going to measure this with the STM. So uh, for long term <laughs> it's not easy. So yeah, so we try to figure this out. But uh, for the time being, I think. Uh, all these, you know, very fine details, uh, we don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I think, uh, I think uh, everyone, everyone agree. This is a really is a for different reason. It's a really is a, Fundamentally, you understand it's a very interesting topological matter. But on the other hand, you also have some hope that this can be useful. So you want to go to a higher temperature without magnetic field. So that's a very general. But uh, uh, if whether you can go or not, that's another. Uh, there's a hope that uh, you know you can go to higher temperature with us. Uh, maybe not this system. It's a different system. Like uh, 
like uh, you know, Yong Tao mentioned, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a hexagonal monolayer, those type of, there's a, there's a much more profound if this can be realized in a, in a monolayer with a very high temperature, right? So, so I think this is a very nice system, is a, is a model system to understand the physics. That's what I really confident about this. This uh, can be, is, is promising is a gallium arsenide for the fraction of quantum Hoffer. If you really push this to get a high, high mobility, right? So that's, I think, uh, is a worthwhile doing. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you.